Hi, this is Boki, and today I'm going to be doing my wrap-up for October. This month, October, I think is pretty much how I am learning that booktube is going to slowly kill me in the best way possible. Basically, I am running to that problem where everyone keeps talking about really good books. I just come out of each of my, like, YouTube and Twitter exchanges with a million more books that I need to read, but unfortunately, I don't have the time to read them all, and I don't know when I'm going to, so... Yeah, each week I go to the library, I end up with a stack of books, and I think I end up reading like two of them, if I'm lucky. So yeah, if I didn't do TBRs before, I definitely don't think I'll be able to do them now because they're just gonna be a list of all the books I will never get time to read. And it'll be just like a probability game at that point of which books will I actually get to. Yeah, the other thing is I am trying to get like onto some kind of posting schedule because I know that I will not always have time to post regularly. So I've done a lot of pre-recorded reviews of the books that I'm going to be talking about today. I have not posted them yet. There will be more detailed reviews coming. If you are particularly impatient for one of those reviews to come out sooner than the others, definitely let me know because right now I'm just kind of posting them as I get them edited. Um, so first for the books that I have posted reviews for. Um, first up is Three Dark Crowns by Kendari Blake. And this is a YA fantasy set on a fictional island where to each generation of like the queen um, is born a set of female triplets, each of whom has a specific magic power. Either they are able to survive kind of any poisoning, they are able to manipulate plants and animals, or they are able to manipulate elements of nature. They're separated early on in their life. On their 16th birthday, they are brought back to each other and then they have to kill each other and whoever survives this becomes the queen of the island. Yes. This is the basis for their political system. Yeah. I yeah, I thought this sounded like an amazing premise and I still think it's an amazing premise. I thought the execution was a little bit lackluster. I don't think that there was enough building done to the world around this kind of bizarre setup for a political system. There's also this like kind of almost absurdly instigated love triangle that I was not a fan of. It was yeah, I don't know. I didn't I didn't find myself as invested in the world or the characters as I would have hoped to be for such a cool premise. There are going to be follow-ups. I will probably read them. I probably won't be like actively seeking them out, but it might be the kind of thing where if there's a lull and I want to kind of quickly catch up on a series, this might be one that I turn to. The next four books that I've reviewed is Monstrous, which is a comic book written by Marjorie Liu and illustrated by Sarah Takeda. And this is a beautiful series. So if you love, like if you've read manga or you like the aesthetic of manga and anime, Monstrous I think it will be it's like super up your alley. And it's set in this alternate Asia that's steampunky and it has a lot of really, it has different um, magical and human factions going on, including a really terrifying set of nuns. And yeah, it's just, it's a really interesting world. I found it a little bit hard to understand at times, kind of what's going on, but it's nice because at the end of each chapter you get a little history lesson from a talking cat who explains more of the world to you. So if you think you're interested in it and you find the first kind of few chapters a little bit hard to decipher, I would still recommend sticking with it because those end of chapter lessons will really help you understand what's going on in the story. Uh, so up next, um, now I'm kind of getting into the books that I will be posting reviews for and some of which I've recorded. So again, if there's any that you would like to hear sooner rather than later, definitely let me know. Uh, so first is As I Descended, which is a YA lesbian retelling of Macbeth set in a boarding school. So this is a modern retelling and I really love modern retellings of stories. I am not familiar enough with Macbeth to necessarily talk at length about how well it does this adaptation, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, I really thought the story did a good job of building a creepy kind of boarding school setting, um, but to be honest, I, so, so I actually went to a boarding school for high school. I was not a boarder, so sometimes I get a little bit particular about the way that boarding schools are portrayed, and there were times where, like, the way that the social structure worked in that school, I was kind of like, ugh. That's not what it's like, which maybe it is. I only went to one boarding school, so I don't know. And I feel like there are differences probably between East Coast and West Coast and South and like boarding schools in different parts of the US and the world. And I'm sure there are some that have these bizarre dynamics going on. I feel like my school had weird dynamics, but they weren't like kind of these explicitly laid queen bee kind of dynamics. But yeah, anyway, that wasn't like a terrible thing. That's just like a little thing that I kind of felt like mentioning because it was a little bit weird at times for me to be like, 
Because, yeah, I mean, it does, it, like, it does kind of take me out of the story, but books are not written for me. They're written based on what the author wants to write, so it's not like she should be sitting around going like, oh, well, if I write like this, Bogey's not going to like it, so that's fair. I'm curious, do people, to those of you who are not teenagers, when you read YA, do you feel like you have to, like, kind of shake these characters and be like, none of this matters? You are, like making a big deal out of something that is not remotely important. Like, is that a thing that adult writers put on characters? How authentic, like, I know that's authentic to high schoolers. Like, I remember when, high, like, when I was a teenager, I thought lots of things were important that really aren't. But I feel like sometimes the way, the extent to which that happens in books is not completely realistic. Like, I feel like sometimes people write teenagers a little bit more myopic than I think they are. Um, okay, so yeah, anyway, moving on from my teenage YA existential crisis. Um, next up is an audiobook, and this is Columbine by Dave Cullen, and I, the, not, the audiobook that I listened to was narrated by Don Leslie. So Columbine is about the shooting at Columbine High School in 1999. Um, it is a nonfiction book that takes in a lot of different narratives, like the story of the shooters, their parents, um, the community, teachers, the school itself, the religious community, police, media, like all of these different threads. It tries to weave them together to kind of get at different questions, like why did this happen? Um, how do people survive this kind of event? How do we as a culture kind of take this on when we're discussing it? And I thought it was incredible. I So I used to actually listen to audiobooks a lot more and this, but I, I sort of got away from them um, in part because I didn't feel like paying for an Audible membership and also because I found podcasts. But re lately I've been getting a little bit burnt out on podcasts so I've been moving back into audiobooks and taking advantage of my library's Overdrive subscription. I decided to listen to this and in part actually because of a podcast, um, like a specific one. I was I was on a, like an obsessive true crime podcast listening spree, which is actually a terrible thing to do for your mental headspace. One of the podcasts that's maybe more well known is The Last Podcast on the Left, and I have very mixed feelings about it. I think it's hands down one of the best researched ones, but one of the issues I have is just the sensibility is super shock jockey. They make a lot of jokes that are not my sense of humor and that I just really find gross and I know it's their sensibility I just don't like it but like I said they are one of the best research ones so it's really frustrating and I listened to their first episode on Columbine and it was actually one of the more somber ones that they've done which I think has to do with the fact that the hosts themselves were younger um, when Columbine happened and I think those of us who were young at that time we have like this kind of like response that is based so much on what our, our, how it affected our, like, school's, like, livelihood. Like, I remember school pre-Columbine versus post-Columbine. I remember, like, my principal coming in and having a discussion with us. I was nine at the time and, like, talking to us about what is okay to say and not say in school in terms of threats, like, using hyperbolic language, <laughs> like, which as a nine-year-old, they weren't saying hyperbolic language, but you, that's basically what they're talking about. I, I listened to the first part and I thought it was actually pretty well done, but I just decided to, instead of listening to the next part and potentially subjecting myself to their humor again, I would just listen to this audiobook. And I mean, it's it's an, it's really good, but it's really rough. There are some very vivid descriptions of the events of the shooting. So if you think that you want to read this book, but that you might not want to, like, that that might be hard for you, um, or maybe might be too hard for you, I would recommend reading the book so that you can kind of quickly scan through those pages instead of kind of listening to the audiobook narration, which you can fast forward through, but you can't necessarily like skim through it and just move on. I thought the audiobook was really good. It was worth listening to. Um, I'm really glad that I consumed this book in some way. A personal response, like for me, that was very weird. was like, like I said, I was nine when Columbine happened. So when it happened, like, it was a bunch of high schoolers, so it was all these kids who were so much older than me, or who seemed so much older than me. And because when you're in elementary school, you know, high school kids seem like grown ups basically. And so it almost seemed foreign because of that. And now I'm like so much older than these kids were at the time. And it's just like you're listening to it and you just remind yourself that these are kids. Like so many of the people involved were kids on both sides of this. And it's just like it's so hard for that. I just. I don't know, I, it's such a weird thing to kind of compare your response to a story like based on where you were when it happened and where you are when you're like reading through it. Yeah, it, that, was, that was, that was an intense read.
on a less intense note, uh, I am currently on a huge American Revolutionary War spree because I finally watched Hamilton, um, which I will brag about in probably several reviews, be that I like talk about these American Revolutionary War books in. Um, but one of them is The Turncoat by Donna Thurland. Um, so this is a historical fiction book set during the American Revolution. It's about a Quaker woman named Kate Gray and a English major named Lord, uh, Lord Peter Tremaine and to meet at her home and he unsuccessfully or he almost successfully seduces her until his papers are stolen and then intrigue happens and yeah they're drawn into the war and Kate ultimately becomes a spy and engaged to his cousin so lots of complicated dynamics and intrigue there. Um, I really really enjoyed this book. I, it wasn't perfectly done. I have issues kind of with some of the plotting and the pacing but I really enjoyed it and this is the first in a series, the Renegades of the Revolution series, so I will definitely be checking those out um, including a book about pirates apparently so I am super psyched for that. Um, and now I, I'm also reading through two books right now. One is another audiobook. This is Ron Chernow's uh, biography of Washington. Uh, so he was the one who wrote Hamilton, the, the biography that inspired the musical. And I still have to read Hamilton, but I started with Washington just because the audiobook was available for my library. And I am really, really enjoying it. It's such an interesting book to be reading um, against the backdrop of this current election because you're like, oh, this guy was our very first president and he represented all these things about, you know, the American way. And now we have Donald Trump running for president. Yeah, it's been making me think a lot about what it means to be president. Um, but I'm really enjoying this, uh, this biography. The audiobook is really well done. I'm, yeah, I will have a review for, of it up when I'm done. Um, but it's actually interesting listening to that biography while reading The Turncoat because like characters pop up in one that show up in the other. I actually got spoiled for, well not, I actually got like spoiled, not completely, but like kind of spoiled for some things that happened in The Turncoat because the Washington biography was like, oh yeah, there's this girl who ends up married to Benedict Arnold. And I was like, huh, that name sounds familiar. I was like, oh right, she's in The Turncoat and now I know what's going to happen to her. The other book that I am reading right now is I Remember You by Ursa Sigurdotter. So this was, this is a, an Icelandic crime slash ghost story. Don't read this book alone at night if you're easily freaked out. It's, um, it's two different stories. There's a group of friends in one story who go to an island that even by Icelandic standards is isolated and they are trying to repair this house. There's no one around them and of course they end up realizing that they might not be alone. There's also another story happening concurrently. A, a doctor who also um, his son went missing um, is investigating the suicide of an older woman and realizes that she may know something, she may have known something or may have had some connection to his missing son. So somehow these stories are gonna get connected. I don't know yet how that's gonna happen. I was reading this last night in the dark and like with like very few lights on uh, that was like my Halloween celebration and then I was like no I can't do this and yeah but I'm easily freaked out so yeah the the creepy house setting is strong with this one so that is my October wrap up um it was a good month I feel like I've got a lot more American Revolutionary books history fiction whatever books to read um I am looking for more recommendations for that so please let me know if you have any um yeah, so some of these reviews will be posted soon. Um, yeah, and bye.